Hello everybody and welcome. Today I am playing World of Warcraft and this is the beginning of a very special week here on Tollbooth Games. All, all this week for the next seven days I am going to put up a video and this week the theme is mount farming. So I figured I might as well start out start out my week of mount farming with the one of the most notorious mounts in the entire game and that of course is Invincible's Reigns. Dropped by the one and only, well, yeah, for now the one and only Lich King. So Many of you know, as many of you know, this is a bit of a trek. I'm not going to show you all of it. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me go through the 45 minutes that it takes to go through this entire raid. I'm going to speed it up between bosses. That way it's a little bit easier for everyone to di digest. So here we are already at the first boss, which is Lord Marogar. You don't have to worry about really any of the mechanics obviously don't stand in the fire but even if you do it does not do much damage to you especially at level 100 obviously if you're lower levels it's gonna hurt you a little bit more and this is also a really great way to get some transmog gear so I'm gonna be checking out all the different transmog gear that I get even though I'm not really looking for new transmog right now I want to see what the leveling gear looks like in Legion when it comes out in two weeks so you don't have to worry about any of the trash here you can just run straight up to the boss and don't worry if the boss's health won't change all that much at the beginning of the fight you have to drain her man mana shield first you also don't have to worry about any of these adds that are coming up you can just cleave them down pretty easily I'm in a tank spec right now which makes that really really easy so I just knock her down don't worry about the adds and collect your loots and it's as easy as that and I didn't really get anything I got a plate head that looks like that I'll let you be the judge of I don't really like that in all honesty so we'll wait for the elevator and I'll see you at the next boss here we are at the third boss of Ice Crown Citadel and this boss is a little unconventional in that you don't at max level have to really kill anything or anyone the only thing you really have to do is hop in this cannon hit one hit the cannon blast all the way to get this bar full but don't don't overheat don't go to 100 keep it around 90 because if you overheat you won't be able to attack and then it just gets annoying and you have to wait for it to cool down so I uh, like that I just overheated alright well here we go. A little bit of a setback, but not too bad. Two is the big, two is the really big heavy hitter shot. Um, just kill a couple of things that come out of this portal. That should just about do it. They should go away. There they go. Bye bye, horde. And now we just run over here and collect our loots. One thing that I have noticed that I really don't like and I hope, I really hope they fix is right now I'm hitting the S button. So I'm walking straight backwards, but as you can see, I am not going backwards and forwards. Oh shoot, I just made it really hard to <laughs> walk to the loot. Alright, there we go. There's the loot. So going sideways right now I want to go that way oh I notice as soon as you get back onto land you're completely good 
So next for the next boss, all you have to do is talk to Mard and Bronzebeard, and then wait and wait and wait, and I'll probably speed this up. All right, now that all that RP is done, all you have to do just come up here, punch him in the face a couple of times. He will sometimes spawn adds if you don't kill him quickly enough. Don't worry too much about him, just cleave him down as soon as possible. Because he does have a decent bit of health for for the f being the fourth boss in this raid, but should not be a problem again at max level. So, you c let's run over here and check out our loot after the RP gets done, even even more RP gets done. And then I should get the storming in the, the citadel achievement. Did I get it? Huh. Guess not. Well, I haven't gotten it on Oh, I did get it the very first week I had my Demon Hunter, so that's why I didn't get it. But that's how you get it, and then you move on to the inside of the Citadel. And we will see you at the next boss. For the bosses today, I'm moving left to right. As you can see, I am at Fester Gut. This, again, at level 100 is just very tank and spank. There are a couple of things, though, to look out for. He will stun you, which can get quite annoying because it's uh, it's a six second stun which is just really gets on my nerves another thing you have to look for is there will be a little green circle that comes up underneath your character right there don't stand in it because an ooze will come out and that will hit hurt you and it will also stun you also when you're finished with these two bosses don't forget to hit the gas release valve which will open up the door to Professor Putricide. The next boss is Rotface again tank and spank try to stay in the middle because as the fight goes on there will be green slime that creeps in from certain parts of the room but if you stay in the middle it won't be an issue at all. As you can see there isn't even any green slime down yet and he's down to 10% health. And now he is dead and there's green slime starting to come in. I didn't get much by way of transmog. I got a mace I suppose and another cloak. Uh, I'm not really a fan of that cloak, but I just hit the gas release valve, so I'm gonna head over to Putricide right now. For Professor Putricide, it again is tank and spank. Try to tank him as close to his table as possible. Pro tip, do not drink when it says drink me. It is one of the most annoying things because you get turned into one of his experiments and it's really hard to attack him because you can't do much damage. One thing you'll notice is that there are all of these adds that will spawn. They will knock you back and push you all over the place but they won't deal much damage so you don't have to worry about them. You can cleave them down if you want. And it looks like I got a sword. Uh, again, not a huge fan of that sword. All right, on to the next wing. Next up is the Blood Prince Council in the middle wing in Ice Crown Citadel. This one you have to just kind of pay attention to make sure that you are attacking the right one. As you can see, there's only one that has a full health bar, the other two do not. And they will switch throughout the fight. So if you don't burn the first guy down quickly enough, and you just focus him down and don't realize that the health bar changed you could be sitting here for quite a while luckily he did not change the health bar did not change so we were able to just burn him down pretty quickly and I got a fist weapon looks alright and a cloth chest ooh that's a 
a pretty decent looking rope. And then an offhand, which is just a purple shard. Next up is the Blood Queen, and we'll see you in a minute. Well, that was a pretty quick minute. Here we are at Blood Queen. Tank and Spank again. She will throw down some purple clouds that you can actually stand in at max level. If you're lower level, you might have to kite her just a little bit. She will not bite anyone or phase anyone as if it's just one person so you don't have to worry about any of the mechanics and you can just burn her down. This next boss is actually one of my favorite bosses because it's pretty unique. What you need to do is heal up the drake that is in the middle of the room while staving off all of all of the different adds that come up. However, I obviously am on my demon hunter and cannot heal. All you have to do is just go over to the side and be sure to not pull any of the risen arc mages and you'll be able to walk right by. If you are on a class that can heal, definitely just pull the risen arc mages and heal the boss up. It should only take four or five heals at max level and you should be good to go. Because I'm on my demon hunter, I'm going to skip it and move straight on to the next one. The second to last boss here is Syndragosa. She is mostly tank and spank. You don't have to worry about the mechanic where she will freeze someone in the raid because if there's only one person, Blizzard made it so that they will not have to worry about the mechanic much like most of the bosses in ICC now. So it's pretty easy solvable and you don't have to worry about Ice Tomb or trying to burst her down. I got an offhand and that is it. Wow, not a, lot, not a good day for transmog. This is also a place where if your bags are getting full you can mount up so if you have a mount with a vendor on it you can sell everything so I'm gonna do that actually I'm not gonna do that just letting you guys know and we will go to the upper spire first yeah teleport to the upper spire and then run straight, aco straight across here and we will have a meeting with the Lich King. Alright, this is it. This is why we came here. To get the horsey that drops from the Lich King. This is also one of the only fights, actually I'm pretty sure the only fight in the entire raid where you actually have to worry about mechanics. When you see those little black things pop up, you have to make sure to run away because when that black pool pops up, you will go flying and you will most certainly go flying off of the edge. Another thing you have to worry about is these ice spheres that keep falling down periodically throughout the fight. If you touch one, you'll go flying and you will die. So you can see me, I'm actually jumping away from the boss right now and hitting them with my glaive throw. That's one way to do it. You can also use an AoE um, like I did right there. Just really easy. Just you have to be aware of what's going on at all times. One of, one of those will send you off the edge and flying to your death and you will not be getting invincible that way. So now we've beaten the fight and we just have to wait for all the RP so I will check back with you when we kill the Lich King and are able to loot him.
And there it is. The Lich King is down. I actually just got revered with the Ash Ashen Verdict. And here's the moment of truth. Did we get it? It does not look like it, but we did get a cool looking axe and a uh, alright looking crossbow. Alright, well, the beginning of this mount farming week did not go completely to plan, but not too bad. I always enjoy coming back through some of these older raids and hopefully we'll have better luck in the next coming days because I will see you for the next seven days. So I will see you tomorrow. Have a good one, y'all.